Today I'm going to show you how to turn this into this. Let's get undone. Gerald Undone. He's crazy. What's happening, everybody? I'm Gerald Undone, and I'm just a small town girl living in a lonely world. Get out of my set! Sorry about that, I don't know how we got in here, but I'm Gerald Undone, and today I'm going to be showing you how I made my wireless controller for the Pocket 4K. Now there's not actually anything about this that's exclusive to the Blackmagic, you could do this for any camera, but the Pocket 4K doesn't have face detect autofocus, so I pull focus manually, and I like to be able to see what I'm doing when I do that, so that's why I use all this. I used to have a wired option that I used in my old setup, but since I'm much further away from the camera now, and there's more obstacles in the way, we're gonna go wireless. And this build was motivated by this little guy here, which is the Blitz Light 300 from ICANN, which is exactly the same as the Hollyland Mars 300 that you see all over YouTube, but for less money. I've got quite a few products from ICANN that are basically redistributions of other products, because I find that I often save a decent bit of money doing so. Like this wireless focus module here, which you can find online as the PD Movie Live Air, but I got it from ICANN for I think $60 less. Now, this video isn't sponsored by ICANN, I just wanted to give you a heads up on that, because I think you can save some money, and also so that way you know why I chose the products I did and where the prices are coming from. All right, so let's get to building. Now my original build for this involved using the iFootage Cobra monopod, little mini tripod thing, but I looked around and I don't think you can really buy this anymore by itself, unless you want to order it on eBay, and I think there's only one. So instead, we're gonna be making this work with the Manfrotto Pixie little tripod thing because these are much cheaper and much easier to find. This one was only $20. So let's start over here with the monitor. So this is the Atomos Shinobi. Never mind these. These are just for making it look better flat so there's no reflections. So this is the Atomo Shinobi. There's a lot of different monitor options you could use. It's actually, probably doesn't really matter that much if you're gonna be indoors and just using it to shoot yourself because then, you know, sun and brightness and all that isn't that important. But if you are gonna be shooting outdoors or just want a slightly better general purpose monitor, I think the Shinobi is a great bang for the buck at $299. There are cheaper monitors out there, and you can use whatever you want for this build. But we're not just going to go straight ahead and attach this to the tripod, because first we want to attach the ability to use a rod mount onto the monitor. Now, what I'm using for that is this guy here. There's so many options you could... This, this one is very flexible and up to you. This is actually from my DJI Ronin-S. This is the riser plate, and then this piece is part of the focus module mount that you can get for the Ronin-S. But there's so many different things you could do. You get some stuff from small rig or whatever. Basically, you just need the ability to hold a rod, and to attach it to the bottom of your monitor, which is probably going to be a quarter twenty. So this is what it looks like attached. Basically, we can have a little rod coming out here now, and this is on the bottom. And the bottom of this plate offers more mounting options for quarter twenty, so we can attach that to the Pixie. And we'll go ahead and do that now, actually. And we'll screw it into the back one. I think that'll probably be better for weight distribution in the long run. So we'll tighten that down. And now we have our monitor mounted onto the tripod with a rod there. So now when we grab our focus module, the one, like I said, the Live Air Compact, this is $239. Like I said, the prices may vary depending on whether you get the PD Movie one or the ICANN one and where you get it from. And there's also a second version out now, like the Live Air Compact 2, which I think is $299. Again, prices may vary. And the difference is this one has a built-in battery that you use a micro USB port for, where the Mark II version has removable batteries. Now, for this build, the micro USB port is actually going to be incorporated in here, but if you go for the Mark II version or if you're using the Tilta follow focus unit, then you have to adapt the build to work accordingly for that. But for the most part, it should be pretty similar. So we're just going to take this thing and mount it onto the rod that we've got here. When we're looking at ourselves like this, we can just pull focus like that. Overall, I actually quite like this system. I've used this one and I've used the Tilta one and I keep going back to this one. I just find it a lot easier to set up. You basically just power on both units and it just pairs and starts working. And if you're using a lens that's not saved or you've never used it before, it's really easy to calibrate. You just turn it to one stop, turn it to the other stop, and then start to turn it back a little bit and then it just goes the rest of the way. It takes like 10 seconds to set up. So next up, we're gonna transmit our video wirelessly and that's where we're gonna use this ICANN Blitz 300 thing. Now, this is actually pretty good. I was expecting it to be just okay for the money because like I said, the ICANN one is cheaper than the Hollyland one that I saw by, I think about 60 bucks. I think this one at the time I got it was like $3.99, but I've seen it go anywhere from like 400 to 450, where the competition, which is exactly, it's exactly the same, just has a different sticker on it, is 450 up to 550. So you can save anywhere from 50 to $100 getting the ICANN version. 
and I found absolutely no differences between them, and I found it works great. On the unit that goes on the camera, you've got an HDMI in and an HDMI relay out, so you can go to another monitor on the camera there. And then this one also has two HDMI outs as well, so you've got a lot of options for setting it up to different screens and combinations like that. You can power it either with a Sony L-series battery or with, there's a DC plug option down here, which is what we're going to be using again. I'm actually more excited about this unified power thing than I am about the wireless transmission. And then on this side, there's an on-off switch. There's a firmware upgrade port and then some, you know, link lights and that kind of thing. I have the one on the camera already on, so you're going to see when we get this all built that all I have to do is flick on the switch and then it just it takes a few seconds for it to communicate and then it just puts it on the screen. You don't really have to do anything or press any buttons or set anything up. And I never even set up any kind of syncing or pairing when I got it. It just did it on its own. So that's pretty great. Now for this to attach it, I'm going to use the quarter 20 on the top of the monitor as well. And there's a couple different ways you can go about this. The unit itself comes with this little module that you can screw down onto it that gives you a quarter 20 on the side if you want to mount it that way. And there's also a quarter 20 just built into the bottom. So we can do it this way, which you might find to be a little bit tall, or we can do it on the side, which is the way that I'm going to go about it. Now you could use something like this, which is just sort of like a little small rig quarter 20 on one side, quarter 20 on the other, and then you could adjust it around. We're going to see if we can make it work a little bit more low profile with just a simple quarter 20 to quarter 20 two-way male adapter thing. But what I would recommend, I'd recommend you actually just have a bunch of these if you like to do attaching things to other things, is one of these, it's like squishy foam washers, and this will make it a hell of a lot easier to attach things without them spinning in a position that you don't want. So for instance, if we screw this in here, and then say we start to thread this onto the top of the Shinobi. Well, maybe when it's actually tight, it's like pointing the antennas out at you and you don't want that. Well, with this little felt washer thing, you can get it tight in a bit more flexible of positions. So we're going to go ahead and screw that on. All right, perfect. So now we've got a decent amount of resistance. I don't actually know where I got that foam washer from, either from the hardware store. If I can find some, I'll put them in the link in the description, but just, if you can, buy yourself a little packet of those and keep them around. But anyway, now on the front, we have our indicator lights and easy access to our on-off switch. But on the back, we have our HDMI and power connections so that we can manage our cables a little bit better. And we can even bend the antennas up like this to make it, I don't know, look a little bit cooler and a little bit more organized. All right. Now we can finally get into the powering stuff, which is something that I've been <laughs> really excited about with this. Now this is going to inflate the cost quite a bit, so at this point, we could say time out, and if you wanted to keep the rest of the cost down, you could just put a Sony L-series battery in here, and one on here, and then that's pretty much it. And then now you'll be probably the cheapest option, because you can get a pair of those batteries on Amazon for like, I don't know, 50 bucks, and they're decent, and you don't even need the big ones for this combination. But if you want something you can set it all up with just one V-mount battery, have the whole thing last for quite a while, and not have to take out multiple batteries, that's what we're going to set up now. And I get excited about this stuff, but whatever. Okay, so first up, we have this little guy here, which is an adapter that goes from Sony L-series to V-mount. And this is on b &H, I think, for $85, so not exactly cheap. But anytime you start using V-mount, batteries, the prices just go up. I guess it's because now you're in professional equipment. But anyway, so we'll take this thing and we'll attach it to the back of the monitor. And now our monitor will support V-mount batteries. And I've got a small little V-mount battery here from Bebop. And I've done a video on these guys before. They're outstanding. Shout out to Tommy Calloway for telling me about this company, but their batteries, these are the only batteries I would buy now probably. Uh, you can get these really compact ones, 45, 90, 150 watt hours I think is the biggest one, but they're the same form factor, they just get a little bit deeper. They're fantastic, the quality is great, I love it. just everything about them. Bebop is my number one recommended battery now. And you can get this little guy, 45 watt hours, and strap them on the back here, and now like, I know we're bulking this up quite a bit, but just check this out. We've got a unified power source, and it's that small. We've got an indicator light on the side to let us know how much battery power we have. And we've got a USB port and a DTAP port. They have this cool design where you can actually put your DTAP plug in either direction. So I have one here. So typically you'd be able to go in one direction only, but in case you wanted to manage the cable the other way, on this guy, you can flip it over and plug it in on the other side. Just a really cool novel idea, and I think it's great. Okay, so now let's rig our power up. So I've got a couple things here. First of all, I've got a micro USB cable, and this we can connect to the 
the focus module down here to keep that juiced up all the time. And then I've got this guy here, which is DTAP to DC plug, and that's how we're gonna power the wireless video transmitter. Okay, so first of all, let's take our, now these, I should mention these Bebop batteries have both USB and a DTAP port, but if you don't, you can get something like this, which is, goes in DTAP on one end and then gives you another DTAP on this side and a USB port on the other side. And this is handy if you don't want to have to have things plugged into your battery. So this L series to V mount battery adapter thing on this side here, it's got a single DTAP, like you can see down here. And so you can take this thing and plug it in here. And now I think that that's fine. Yeah. And it doesn't interfere. We should be able to take out, let's make sure that our clearances are good there. They look good. So now this is attached to the battery plate itself and not to the battery, so we can swap out batteries without needing to disconnect anything. And does that still go on fine? It does, yeah. The clearance is a little bit tight, but it's okay. This one's from Rolux, which is a company that has other brands, like in the US, they, they distribute to Indie Pro Tools, which I've recommended before for power adapters and stuff like that. But I ordered this one on Amazon and it showed up as Rolux. But if you see one of these Indie Pro Tools, I've got a few of those and they're also pretty good. So we're gonna take our USB cable here and plug it into the bottom of this adapter thing. And then we'll take our DTAP to DC connection and we'll plug that into the top of that there. So as you can see, we've got USB coming out the bottom and the DTAP coming out the top. All right, and then our HDMI cable, we'll use HDMI out one and that's gonna go into the Shinobi. So now we've just got three cables and we can manage this easily with the same Velcro cable ties that I took off. If you don't have, I recommend these in like every build video. If you don't have a big set of Velcro cable ties, get yourself some and use them everywhere. Keep yourself organized. All right, so let's tidy up the cables here and then we'll wrap up. Okay, so that's all built. Now let's boot it up and see if it works. So we'll turn on the Shinobi and we'll turn on the wireless unit here and the focus module automatically turns on as soon as the cable is connected, which is one thing I don't like. I wish that there was an on off switch because otherwise we're gonna have to unplug it or take the battery out. Now, as far as a few of the other prices that I didn't mention, the Bebop battery is gonna be, this doing this you know universal power upgrade thing is gonna be the most expensive part. This battery is $245 and then you're gonna need probably about 20 to $30 in cables as well and then the $85 battery plate adapter. So that's gonna inflate your cost by probably 330 to $350 or more if you wanna use a bigger battery. And you can definitely do that for cheaper if you just wanna go individual batteries and maybe that's the better option for you. But I like unified power systems like this. I think I've said that like 20 times in this video already. <laughs> so if we wanna get the battery out quickly, we can just turn this thing this way, loosen it a little bit, and then now the battery has clearance put a fresh one in and then just sort of lock that back in. We can now see, we can see that what we're seeing, we're seeing ourselves here now. And uh, I don't know how well you can see this, but if we take a look, is that in the frame and focused? I'm gonna do my best here guys, but we can see for latency. So if I move my hand here, then you can see it move on the screen. Does that make sense? You can see what the latency is like. So I would say about half a second, which for this purpose is fine. And then as far as runtime goes, you should be able to get a few hours out of this combination, but you can use a bigger battery, obviously a bigger V-mount battery if you need to have it run longer, or you can just switch them out and it boots back up and gets everything going within like 10, 15 seconds. So you're fine, even if you need to hot swap batteries. And then over here, you can just press the button on the side and see how much juice you have left. We're obviously fully charged. Anyway, I think I'm at the point where I'm starting to ramble now. Look, the screen where you can see yourself and you can focus and it's wireless. And I've got it on a little Manfrotto Pixie. Enough said. All right. I'm done. Where the Mark II version has actual removable battery. And on the back, we have our in and out ports. <coughs> where the Mark II version has actual. Where the Mark II version has removable. And then I've got this guy here, which is a. I have a bunch of these if you like to do attaching things to other things.